My name is Mary Crane and I am a senior in animal science pre-vet and I decided to do my project over the practice of soaring. Soaring can be described as the abusive and criminal act of causing pain deliberately to a horse in order to magnify their leg motion. This can be seen in gated horse breeds including racking horses, spotted saddle horses, Rocky Mountain horses, Missouri fox trotters, and the Tennessee walking horse, which is the most common horse breed to be seen soared. What is known as a big lick is the chest high stride achieved from the practice of soaring. It can actually be achieved through more humane methods, but this would involve getting the horse used to tall shoes in order to eventually wear heavier and heavier shoes. The time that it takes for one to actually accomplish this depends on various factors, such as the individual horse and its age, strength, and energy capacity. This in itself takes too long to accomplish. Owners and trainers alike wanted instant gratification. They wanted a shortcut to having the horse perform the gait in an increased, fa increased fashion. They discovered in the early 1950s that causing pain to the horse's front feet would cause the horse to lift up their front legs quickly and thrust them forward in order to avoid the pain. They would then be forced to increase the use of their back feet to remove some of the weight that's being placed on their front, front legs to also avoid the pain. Thus the practice of soaring was born. Soaring is done by either irritating or blistering the forelegs of the horse. This can be accomplished through various methods, including the ejection of the forelegs with chemical irritants, which is called chemical soaring, or through the application of painful mechanical devices, which is called mechanical or physical soaring. What is known as chemical soaring involves the application of acidic-like chemical agents to the horse's lower leg hair and skin. The leg is then covered with plastic and a leg wrap, thereby allowing it to cook into the skin. Various chemicals are used, inclu including kerosene, diesel, crouton oil, Gojo hand cleaner, WD-40 oil, mu and mustard oil. The skin becomes sensitive due to the chemical chemicals used, and then what is known as action devices are placed around the horse's pastern. These devices slide up and down as the horse moves, causing further irritation to the area. The chemicals used also cause the horse to have sensitive hooves as well as produce notable skin scars. These skin scars are a warning sign to inspectors and when there were increased inspections another cruel practice was born in which a chemical stripping agent is applied to the horse's legs in order to remove or burn off scar tissue. Mechanical or physical soaring can achieve the same results as chemical soaring. This type of soaring involves the horse, the horse having its hoof trimmed down or having an action device like a chain applied to the hoof. This centers the pain in the middle of the hoof, resulting in the feet being picked up faster and going up higher. Various methods are used, such as grinding the hoof down to the sole to expose the spongy tissue within making the hoof fall shorter than the sole, purposely causing, laminite, or purposely causing laminitis. This is called the natural fix. There are many other ways to also do this. Sometimes they will even stick nails and screws through the hoof walls into sensitive lamini and cover the holes with epoxy. Some owners and trainers will actually try to cover up the pain felt by the horse by using numbing agents during inspection of their horse's legs. Or right before the inspection, they may apply what is called a distraction device, such as an alligator clip in the rectum of the horse or on the horse's testicles, or place plastic ties around the horse's gums. In 1957, in the state of Tennessee, they implemented a law against the practice of soaring. This law was ignored by the people composing the industry of the Tennessee walking horse. People continued to display public outrage in relation to this cruel practice, and thus the Horse Protection Act was cre created and enacted 
in 1970 by con Congress. It was meant to end the practice of swearing by making it illegal to exhibit, show, sell, auction, or transport sword horses, as well as putting into place large penalties for violations. The Horse Protection Act itself is carried out by the U.S. Department of Agriculture's, An Agriculture's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Services. In the beginning, they were provided with limited funding, amounting to only around 500000 per year, and until 2012, it had never been raised. In 2010, an audit was conducted that analyzed the USDA's APHIS program. The program was eventually found to be not satisfactory, and funding was upped to 696000 There has been no recent increase in the funding as per request. Since the passage of the HBA, cases of soaring in the U.S. has decreased, but the practice continues to occur. The HBA itself only makes it illegal to exhibit, show, sell, auction, or transport sword horses, but, the, but it does not make the practice itself illegal. The USDA's enforcement of the law only goes as far as the show rings and grounds, but it excludes private property and barns where the practice actually occurs. In recent years, progress, progress has been made against this cruel act, but it still continues to happen. Horses continue to be soared and experience an intense amount of pain, sometimes suffering from lasting damage that they can never recover from. And unless there are stricter, stricter regulations, more inspections, and stricter punishments for those found in violation of the law, of the law, there may never be an end to it.